Welcome to my channel, I'm Scott, and in this video we're going to value five semiconductor stocks. The first one is Microchip Technology, ticker MCHP. The second is ST Microelectronics, ticker STM. The third is Global Foundries, ticker GFS. The fourth is ON Semiconductor, ticker ON. And the last one is United Microelectronics, ticker UMC. Semiconductors are found in thousands of products, such as cars, computers, phones, etc. A really important component in almost all electronic devices is the semiconductor chip. These electronic devices have greatly advanced communications, computing, healthcare, military systems, transportation, clean energy, and countless other applications. Companies like Nvidia, AMD, and Qualcomm are fabulous. Taiwan Semiconductor is an example of a foundry. Foundries manufacture chips for other companies like Nvidia. Some companies do both, like Intel. Let's get started with the model. The first company we're going to look at is Microchip Technology, ticker MCHP, and their latest financials are 331 2022. This is a large cap company, 37 billion market cap, they're trading at $67 a share, and they have 556 million shares outstanding. Let's look at their financials. The way you value a company is you estimate the free cash flows into the future and then you discount those numbers back to today's value. That's what we're doing in this video. And free cash flow is cash flow from operations minus capital expenditures. Their free cash flow grows from 1.4 billion to 1.8 billion. We don't have their 2022 free cash flow so I use 2021. Free cash flow is a cash that's remaining for you, the investor. So a company can buy back stock, pay dividends, invest back into the business, or pay down debt. And some companies do all four. Net income is the profit or loss on the income statement. It's revenue minus expenses, and that peaked in 2022 at 1.3 billion. Revenue is a sales for the company, and that grew 28% from 2019 to 2022. The weighted average cost of capital is a really important number in a DCF model. That's a discount rate we apply to the future cash flows. So the higher the WAC, the lower your valuation. The lower the WAC, the higher your valuation. The range on Finbox is 7.5% to 8.5%. I'm going to use the middle WAC for each video. So 8% is a discount rate we're gonna to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 47 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today's and weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $43 billion. We divide that by 556 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $77. They're trading at $67, so they're trading at a 13% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Most companies provide revenue targets for future years. Their revenue target for 2025 is eight and a half billion. For 2024, it's 8.2 billion. And for 2023, it's 7.9 billion. And in order to calculate their 2026 revenue, I grew it at a similar rate as the prior years. So I got 8.8 .8 billion. In order to calculate their future free cash flows, I need to see what percent of their revenue they convert to free cash flow. So I summed up these four free cash flow numbers and I divided by the sum of these four revenue numbers. That comes out to 29%. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 29%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at 112. They're saying it's 40% undervalued. 18 analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 86. The lowest 67, the high is 125. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $54,000 today. That's a 440% return or an 18% annual return. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. It looks like a pretty similar pattern as other semiconductor companies. It was trading a lot lower from 2017 through 2020. It bottomed out at about $30 during a COVID crash. Then it came up a ton since then, peaking at about $90. And then it's been regressing the past few months since we've been in a bear market. The stock is currently trading where it was in November 2020. 
So if you bought it in November 2020, the recent bear market erased all your gains. But if you bought it before November 2020, you're probably up a good amount. The second of the five companies we're going to look at is ST Microelectronics, ticker STM. Their latest financials are also March 31st. This is a large cap company, 36 billion market cap. They're trading at $40 a share and they have 903 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow peaked in 2021 at 1.1 billion. It's a little under 1 billion in the trailing 12 months. Their net income looks really good. It more than doubles from 2019 to the trailing 12 months, 2.4 billion. Their revenue is up 39% since 2019. It's the highest in the trailing 12 months at 13.3 billion. The wax on Finbox are 7.8% up to 8.8%. I gave them the middle whack of 8.3% and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated the terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 24 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $21 billion. We divide that by 900 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $23. They're trading at $40, so they're trading at a 69% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their revenue target in 2024 is $16.8 billion. 2023 is 15.8 billion, 2022 is 15 billion. And I projected their revenue to be 17.8 billion in 2025. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They convert on average 8% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 8%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street values the company at $76. They're saying it's 48% undervalued. Four analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 59, the lowest 55, the highest 62. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $108,000 today. That's almost a 1,000% return, a 27% annual return. The stock is trading where it was at the end of 2020. It looks like it was trading sideways for about six, seven months, then shot way up but during the recent bear market came back down. The third company we're gonna look at is Global Foundries. Their latest financials are as of 1231. And this is a large cap company, 28 billion market cap. They're trading at $53 a share and they have 532 million shares outstanding. They had negative free cash flows in 2018 and 2019. They finally turned it to positive in 2020. And then it was much bigger in 2021 at over 1 billion. They do have negative net income every single year. They did have the highest revenue ever in 2021, 6.6 .6 billion, but it's only 6% higher than 2018. But it was a big jump from 2020. The WAC on Finbox ranges from 7.8% to 8.8%. I use the WAC of 8.3% and that's a discount rate we're gonna apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year for that's 23 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $21 billion. We divide that by 532 million shares and we get a calculated stock price of $39. They're trading at $53. So they're trading at a 36% premium. It's a sell according to the model. Their 2024 revenue target is 9.4 billion, 2023 is 8.7 billion, and 2022 is 8 billion. And my forecast for 2025 is 10.1 billion. In 2020 and 2021, they converted 13% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 13%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website Simply Wall Street values the company at $100. They're saying it's 47% undervalued. Seven analysts priced this stock and the average price target is $72. The lowest 50, the highest 85. If you invested $10,000 into this company when they started trading, you'd be at almost $11,000 today. That's an 8% return since they just started trading at the end of 2021. The fourth company we're going to look at is On Semiconductor, ticker ON. 
Their latest financials are 331, and they're a large cap company, 24 billion market cap. They're trading at $56 a share, and they have 435 million shares outstanding. Their free cash flow looks really good. It was only 60 million in 2019. It's one and a half billion in the trailing 12 months. Net income also grows a lot from 200 million to one and a half billion. Revenue growth 31% from 2019 to the trailing 12 months. Their WAC on Finbox ranges from 8% to 9%. I gave them an 8.5% WAC, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 31 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using the weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $28 billion. We divide that by 435 million shares. And we get a calculated stock price of $65. They're so trading at $56, so they're trading at a 13% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Their revenue target for 2024 is $8.9 billion. For 2023, it's $8.4 billion. And for 2022, it's $8 billion. And my 2025 revenue forecast is $9.3 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. In 2021 and the trailing 12 months, they convert on average 20% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 20%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at $88. They're saying it's 36% undervalued. 17 analysts priced this stock and the average price target is 71, the lowest 60, the highest 80. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago, you'd have $79,000 today. That's a 23% annual return, a 690% total return. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. So it looks like it peaked at close to $70 and now it's down to 55. It was trading at about $55 in October of 2021. This stock has performed really well during the bear market. It hasn't come down nearly as much as other semiconductor stocks. It looks like it hit pretty close to $10 during the COVID crash. So you could have made an amazing return if you bought it down here. The last semiconductor company we're going to look at is United Microelectronics. Their latest financials are 1231. They're a large cap company, 21 billion market cap. They're trading at 837 a share and they have 2.5 billion shares outstanding. Their free cash flow looks pretty good the past few years. It grew from 1 billion to 1.4 billion. And their net income was really high in 2021 at 1.7 billion. They report all their financials in new Taiwan dollars. I converted that to US dollars on my Excel spreadsheet since we're looking at the ticker that trades in the United States. And their revenue grew 41% from 2018 to 2021. Their WAC on Finbox ranges from 8.3% to 9.3%. I gave them the middle WAC of 8.8%, and that's a discount rate we're going to apply to the future cash flows. We estimated four years of future free cash flows. We also estimated a terminal value, which is all cash flows past year four, that's 32 billion. We discounted those numbers back to today using a weighted average cost of capital. We get a value of the company of $29 billion. We divide that by 2.5 billion shares. And we get a calculated stock price of 1157. The trading at 837, so the trading at a 28% discount. It's a buy according to the model. Their revenue target for 2024 is 268 billion new Taiwan dollars, which equals 9.1 billion US dollars. 2023 is 8.9 billion and 2022 is 9 billion. And I projected their revenue in 2025 to be 9.4 billion. That's how I got their future revenue estimates. They convert on average 21% of their revenue into free cash flow. So I multiplied their future revenue estimates by 21%. That's how I got their future free cash flows. The website simply Wall Street values the company at $13. They're saying it's 37% undervalued. If you invested $10,000 into this company 10 years ago and reinvested the dividends, you'd have $52,000 today. That's an 18% annual return, a 420% total return. But if you did invest $10,000 in 2012, after six years, you would have been pretty much flat. And it's hard to sit in a stock for six years and not see any movement. A lot of people would feel their money's being wasted and prefer to put it somewhere else where they see more growth. Of course, no one can predict the future, but in this case, it would have paid off. This is where the stock has been trading the last five years. So it's about $8 a share, which is where it was trading in October of 2020. 
So in the past year and a half, the stock is back to where it was. But before the fourth quarter of 2020, the stock was really low. It was well under $2. And it looks like it peaked at close to $13. There are 66 stocks in the semiconductor industry. And these are the 12th, 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th largest companies in this industry. That's in terms of market cap. The only two larger than average are Microchip and ST Microelectronics, since the average is $34 billion. The other three are below average. And in terms of CapEx, three of the five spend more than average in CapEx. ST Microelectronics spends the most, so they probably do lots of manufacturing. Microchip is the most leveraged, a 1.4 debt to equity ratio. That means for every $1 of equity, they have $1.40 of debt. UMC pays the best dividend at 3.4%, much higher than average. Global Foundries and On Semiconductor do not pay a dividend. Microchip generates the most free cash flow of the five companies. Two of the companies are below average. All the companies except for Microchip have a better than average price to book ratio. UMC has the best PE ratio. Global Foundries has negative earnings so we cannot look at their PE ratio. Microchip is worst at 29. UMC has the best price to free cash flow at 15. STM is the worst at 37. All the companies are better than average in price of sales. Look at STM's revenue, so much higher than everybody else. Global Foundries has the exact same revenue as the average. STM and UMC are both growing at 12%, which is the average in the industry. The other three are below average. And all the companies except for Global Foundries have a good ROA and ROE. ROA is net income over assets. It's how well a company uses assets to generate a profit. ROE is net income over equity. It's how well a company uses equity to generate a profit. The stock that has performed the best in the past five years is UMC up 312%. On is up 279%. STM is up 138%. Global Foundries is up 103%. And Global Foundries IPO'd recently, so they only have a few months of information. MCHP is doing the worst at 70%. So to summarize, I calculate two companies that are overvalued, STM and GFS, three companies that are undervalued, MCHP, ON, and UMC. Simply Wall Street has all the companies undervalued. The analysts have four companies undervalued, and I could not find any analyst price targets for UMC. So let me know what you think. Give this video a like, subscribe, or comment below. Also, if you'd like to get a custom valuation or just support the channel, you can become a member by clicking on the link in the description below. Thanks for watching.